So this is a short demonstration about the new feature with the Psych Signal data feed integration into our charting platform and to use our cycle analysis with sentiment data directly from Psych Signal and to use it in combination with price chart data on one screen. So how to do that? First of all, open your price chart, which you want to use. So we will use the uh, SPX from your favorite data feed provider here. So we will use a daily chart in this example here um, and get the latest um, price chart uh, just on the screen. So um, after you have the price chart, we need to switch to the Psych Signal data feed integration. So therefore, first of all, uh, save this chart. Um, in this case, I would just call it SPX um, September price data. Just give it a name. Um, yeah, and then you need to restart another winter trade cycles application. And in this case, now we use the direct psych signal integration with your key. So now you're logged into the sentiment data. So what you first can do is just load your safe chart with the SPX price data into your platform. Um, so here we go with the S&P 500 price data. And now we will add the sentiment information on our chart here. So now we are connected to Psych Signal here with this um, situation and just load up the uh, sentiment data on another chart here. So it now directly connects to Psych Signal and opens the uh, yeah, sentiment data directly on the screen. Yeah, there are some additional infos here just shown for further analysis. In this example here, we will use the raw sentiment data for our cycles analysis. Therefore, I will just remove the non-used data sets. Uh, yeah, and after we've done this, well, we can arrange both charts on one screen just by putting the charts this way. So now we have on the top our S&P 500 um, price data and in the lower end the sentiment data just on one screen for further analysis. So now we can prepare a little bit the um, charts for our analysis uh, for price and sentiment just to have enough data um, on the chart here. Let's just align the charts a little bit. So um, yeah, no, the both charts are from, from the timing perspective in alignment from 2010 yeah, to 2015, yeah, so up to today here. So, um, and as always, um, if you deal with these uh, sentiment data, we need to prepare a little bit the data set to apply our cycle analysis here. Um, so first of all, it makes sense to use some standard smoothing here. I'm just using a standard smoothing configuration. Uh, nothing special here. So now the raw sentiment is smoothed out a little bit to make it a little bit more clearer. And after we've uh, done this, we can attach our cycle tools here, which I will do next. So for example, the Dynamic Cycle Explorer, give it a long-term example here. Um, yeah, plot it back into the past and just align it somewhere in the past. I think this was the example used here in the April um, juncture here. So um, now you see the um, cycle shown on the chart here. And what I want to review with you, uh, with you is um, the live call, uh, which was done in um, April this year. So if you um, switch to the uh, Winter Trade website, I did a post on um, 1st March 29, where I did this uh, pre-information about an upcoming interesting situation in the markets. And I just updated, uh, updated this information on the 28th of April with a, with a clear statement here, all in now on the short side. So you can reread this um, article on the market where we have a lot of interesting sentiment information going on. But um, I want to show you how this chart was created. So I loaded up the um, sentiment data from social sentiment by Psych Signal on the April 28th. Um, and this is this is the same configuration as I've shown you now, where I just highlighted this situation. Um, yeah, that it might be an interesting, interesting study here. So um, 
so let, let's recall how this chart was created here. So once you have set up your chart, first of all, let's go back um, in hint in in time that we have the same situation here. So the chart was created on um, 28th of April. So we will move back here in time now up to this point in time. Um, we will do the same on the price chart. Uh, here just let's align it on the same date. Uh, yeah, so this was the situation on the 28th of April as I did this um, forecast here. So, um, and this is the cycle with the length of 200. 39 days detected on sentiment so this is exactly the same as was yeah posted posted live here on, on the page so there was a cycle of 238 days exactly the same cycle here in the real case scenario the sharp was posted on 28th of april with these um, cyclic turns here so now you've seen um how this chart was created so this is how you create um cycle and price chart on one screen and now you start your analysis uh, point of time so what i've detected is that this is a leading sentiment cycle by roughly about a month so this cycle was leading the market by 28 days so and how to detect detect this information um, was the interesting point to um, use our cycle tools so we have an integrated map series turns cycle tool which is now exactly designed to analyze the performance of the detected cycle on sentiment um, on the price chart. To do this, we activate our map indicator, a source chart, we use our sentiment chart. So this is the sentiment chart and the dynamic cycle explorer one. So this is here how the indicator is called. We will use this as source and we want to map this to the price chart on the S&P 500. It should show the draw lines and the trade statistics. Uh, and once we fire this, uh, what the mapping function is doing here, that it's mapping these cycles to, to trading signals on the price chart. So this cell here is exactly this cycle top and this low is exactly this cycle low. So we want to check how the sentiment cycle would have performed on the price chart. Then we see the trade statistics based on this cycle. Yeah, and we can see that um, purely trading the static cycle has a more or less interesting accuracy. But however, the interesting part comes now when you know about that uh, sentiment cycles lead the market. Let's see now what happens if we would trade these uh, signals in the future. So not on the day the turn happens. So we know that this turn in sentiment will somehow be re reflected on the price chart some days later because uh, it will take time when sentiment will be reflected in price data. So therefore we have this uh, function called shift plot. So therefore we can shift now the trade, the, the trade execution into the future. So we know the signal in advance and we can trade not, not the day of the signal, we can trade just later after the signal. So this, this can be done for sure in real time. So once we see um, what we shift our trades for, well, let's say we, we shift it 10 days into the future after the signal has arrived and just check the performance again, uh, we can now see it's more or less the same uh, uh, trade, trade accuracy here. Let's check if we move further into the future, how this would affect trade performance. Uh, and now we see that we increase the accuracy just by executing the trades later. So after the sentiment signal came in and then this makes absolutely sense as sentiment is a leading indicator. And with this um, yeah, futures, you can very easily check um, the effect of um, what happens if we uh, shift sentiment turns for trade execution into the future? And you see here now that this, even the static cycle, but however, if we delay the trade execution for 28 days, so we only trade after the signal has happened, uh, the accuracy of this cycle goes up to 70%. And if you have a look at the trades or the equity curve, 
it's a clear upsloping equity curve if you just review the equity dates just by executing purely these trades. I mean, this is these are the raw trade um, data, and you can clearly see it on the chart how this cycle was able to detect the major low and highs uh, in the market for the last year, three to four years. So, um, so this sentiment cycle has a leading time of 28 days. So it's a one month leading cycle. So once the cycle turns in the sentiment data, the turn will unfold in the price data 20 days after the sentiment turn has happened. And you can clearly see the, um, yeah, uh, the, the, the trade statistics by using our map indicator turns here. So this was exactly how I discovered that, the, that we have a running sentiment cycle in the market. And this is not just a backtest review. I posted exactly this analysis live on the website here. So you see on the chart here, this chart was shifted and mapped 28 days on the S&P. Now, the inter interesting fact of this analysis was a current warning to expect the market top. Yeah, exactly at the end of April, because the current um, or the real top of the cycle occurred at the uh, end of March. Yeah, so this was a this was a, a life cycle warning um, about an upcoming high in the market. You see here the cy occur the cycle top occurred uh, in the sentiment data at the end of March, and we know from our mapping analysis that the turn in price would be expected 28 days after the sentiment turn. So at the point of this analysis, at the 28th of April, yeah, which is exactly um, this point in time here. This was the point in time where we should expect a market top um, to happen in, in the market. So, I mean, it's interesting now to review this, um, this live analysis um, just after the fact to understand how this was done. So um, it's, it's not only about this upcoming top here. So now if we, if we zoom in into the price um, um, chart here, um it gets clearly interesting yeah to see that um uh, let me just just zoom in a little bit more so that um this in point in time here at the end of april yeah we would we would expect the the market top um so let's mark it here manually on the chart. This was this was live warning posted on the website at the S&P at 200, uh, 2100 and, and something. So but the, the other interesting topic here is that this cycle projected an expected low in the sentiment of end of July. So however, we know that we need to shift the signal uh, 28 days into the future. So a market low would be expected at the end of August. So what we know from this analysis is that we would have as expected um, a market top here into the period of yeah end of August. So this was the um, forecast posted live on the website, which we did based on this sentiment cycle here. And you know now if we progress um, until today, yeah, we know what happened in the market. So this was the real-time forecast, which projected a drop yeah, into the period of end of August. And you see now how market reacted just after this forecast. Um, yes, yeah, so I mean, uh, it's just a demonstration on how to use the cycles tools and, and not just cherry picking another nice example here. Um, this is exactly how this warning was posted in the open public forum to our cycles community. And it clearly shows um, the power of using cycle analysis on sentiment data and mapping these cycles to price charts and analyzing the lead time of sentiment cycles to, to the market. And I mean, not just projecting the market top here at this point in time, also projecting the expected market low to happen at the end of August. So there have been two projections based on this forecast. Uh, and you see we do it in the in the public media. So um, yeah, review it for, for your own 
um, analysis. Um, and I think this is another just interesting market juncture we did at the end of April. Thanks for listening.